Let's turn to page 218 in our blue book. 218. see each and every one of you today. Those that are watching via live stream, thank you for being with us. It's a privilege to have you with us. If you're watching later on YouTube, thank you for taking time out of your day as well. Look around you. we got a lot of folks traveling today over this weekend because it's a Labor Day holiday. So if you look around, you see somebody not here, text them, give them a call, something, let them know that you missed them. But it's also good to see each and every one of you here today. I know we've got uh, one visiting couple with us, the Balls. They're friends of uh, the barn hearts and the house rice. They're sitting back there. It's good to have them with us today. Uh, appreciate that. I've been giving my visitors a packet, so we're good there. Is there any other first-time visitors with us? I know you guys, you're not first-time visitors. It's good to see you guys. Thank you for coming and being with us today. Right over here. Sorry about that. Over here, brother. Oh, you done got him too? And we got a young man right here sitting there next to Brother Jeff. But it's awfully good to have you guys with us today. Thank you for being with us. It's just a privilege uh, to have you in the services. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. All right, Father, we love you. We do thank you so much just for the privilege and opportunity to be in your house today. Father, just uh, thanking you for the privilege of being able to lift up your name. Father, how we do thank you for that blessed Redeemer that makes all of this possible. Father, I thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, asking now that you would allow us to lift him up and bring him glory. Father, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. Be with us in each and everything that's said and done. And we'll give you the praise for it all. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As far as our announcements go, we got several. Like I said, once we hit the fall time frame, everything just kind of seems to pick up. Uh, make sure you check out the church calendar. Uh, mark down anything there that's uh, relevant to the different ministries that you're a part of and all of that. A special note there, I've had a couple of people ask me about this, and I was going to talk about it anyway, but let's go ahead and get that done. If you look on September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, we've got what's called the Reclaiming the Vision Conference. Now, what's going to happen there is is we're combining services with Emmanuel Baptist Church. They're going to be with us uh, here at, at Holy Mountain. 
uh, for those services. Brother Bob Sanders, who's definitely no stranger to the church, he's been here several times. Brother Bob's going to be preaching a series of messages. Uh, this is a Bible conference, basically. But he's going to be preaching a series of messages on uh, living victoriously in, uh, in perilous times. Uh, looking forward to that. Brother Bob, is, uh, as you know, is one of the best uh, Bible preaching teachers I have ever been around in my life. I can learn more from him in five minutes than I can about anybody else in an hour. And so he's going to be coming and presenting that. So you just be much in prayer for him, much in prayer for that service, much in prayer for the folks at Emmanuel as we get together uh, there on the 22nd. Uh, choir practice day, 445. Church offices will be closed tomorrow for the holiday. Homecoming next Sunday. We will be meeting at 1030. That means we will not be having Sunday school, but we will be starting the service at 1030. All right. Uh, after the service, we'll be meeting over in the fellowship hall and the banquet hall for the meal. Uh, what we're asking is there's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer, and if you remember the Valentine's banquet that we had earlier this year, that's what we're asking you to do now. Bring enough food for you and your family and a couple of extras, and, uh, you know, and we're going to provide the chicken, but other, you know, other meats or casseroles, all the side dishes, all those kind of things. Uh, you don't have to sign up specifically about what you're bringing. Just let us know how many people are coming so we can get a good head count uh, for the uh, chicken order. Uh, but then just bring enough food for you to feed you and your family and maybe a couple of others if you're having company over. Uh, and that way we'll be sure to have plenty, all right? Uh, the other things the church is providing is the rolls, the drinks, and the paper products. Valor's meeting Thursday, September the 12th at 6 o'clock. Uh, the ladies' retreat is September the 27th through the 29th. All balances for that need to be paid today. Uh, the craft fair, Saturday, October the 19th from 8 to 4. The outreach team is now taking donations of the small individually wrapped candies that you'd give out at Trick or Treat uh, for our Trunk or Treat outreach. Uh, we're going to be using that as well to help maybe sign up additional children for the bus ministry, so keep that in mind. Uh, giving Hearts Ministry for the where we uh, give food to the homeless and, and supplies, uh, individually wrapped snack foods, bottled waters. Got any questions about that, see Ms. Wednesday, uh, Ms. Wendy. Operation Christmas Child. Bar soap, washcloth, solid donuts, chapstick, first aid items, no liquids there. Remember, we've told you this before, that if we fly those things for Operation Christmas Child, that uh, if it's a liquid, if it's an alcohol, anything like that, they will not shift it. So make sure that it's not a liquid. Um, and then also, of course, uh, yesterday was the graveside service for Glenn Culbertson, that's Sister Janet's father. Uh, continue to remember Miss Janet and all the family uh, as, uh, as, as they... Uh, deal with the loss there of Brother Glenn. All right. Any other announcements? All right. Got one card that I do want to read you uh, as well. Uh, and this is from Sister Debbie uh, Robbins. Says, Dear church friends, thank you for all their prayers, kind messages, and love. Uh, and then she asked me that if I would read this little note as well to our Holy Mountain Church family. Thank you all for the messages, visits, and prayers for Ed and myself over the past uh, nine months. I want to especially thank Pastor Tim, Pastor Mike, and Miss Phyllis and Russ for always being there for us. Ed never wanted to burden anyone, but it meant so much to him when a familiar face from church would visit. He loved Holy Mountain and would, and would tell uh, the stories about his past 30 years here teaching and working with the children. He enjoyed that so much, probably because he was such a big kid himself. He brought such joy to everyone he met and was always eager to share the Word of God, even when he was sick. He was strong in his faith, generous and uh, and the kindest, most loving friend and husband. We looked forward to many years together, but uh, God decided he had fought long enough, and, a, and on that Sunday morning, the Lord wrapped his arms around Ed and led him home. I'm happy he isn't suffering any longer. I look forward to the day we're together again, but for now, I'm, uh, I am so tired and, 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 and miss him terribly. Please pray, and, uh, and, and uh, pray, yeah, please pray for me. As I try to gain strength from God and from the memory of Ed always telling me everything will be all right. Love to all, Debbie and Ed Robbins. So you be much in prayer. Continue to be much in prayer for Sister Debbie. Uh, as you get a chance, uh, give her a call or a card or something. I know a lot of people have already done that, uh, and I, I know she truly appreciates that. But you just continue to remember them, okay? Any announcements that I forgot? Then you pray as we sing, all right? Let's all stand. Page 283. 283. <laughs> 
Could you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. From your passion and pride, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the land. Oh, so are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light. Death into life everlasting. He passed and we follow him there. Over us sin no more has dominion. For more than conquerors we are.
His word shall not fail you. He promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying. His perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look for in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. stand and do our fellowship song page 234 don't forget to shake hands with our visitors make them welcome today we're glad for every one of you <laughs>
Once again, it's good to see everybody. Appreciate you being with us today. Unless I forgot it between now and a few minutes ago and time I got back up here, this is Mitch Davenport, correct? And that's Miss Kay's cousin. It's good to have him with us. And then Brody Davenport, correct? Dunford, Dunford, not, not East of Davenport, you're the Dunford. I got it wrote down, I just didn't read it. Uh, it was good to have both you guys with us. Of course, again, it's good to have the balls with us as well. Brother Ball, are you the gentleman that, uh, is Bill Ball moving? Did you used to go to Lions Park? You and I met one another probably 28 years ago. Uh, you, uh, I, I filled in. You were all between pastors. And I filled in there for about six weeks or so. Uh, and you were there then. I knew you looked familiar to me, and, and it, it dawned on me. I was talking to one of the guys back in the back for, for choir, and he said, that's, he said, I think that's the Bill Ball that does the moving. And I said, if it is, <laughs> that's quite all right. Like I said, I looked at you, and I thought you look a little familiar but until I connected the dots back there. But we were in church at uh, Lions Park for several months there together, about six weeks in a row and then off and on for a while. But it's awful good to have you guys with us. Appreciate you being in the service, all right? All right, you pray. Brother Dennis is going to sing. You pray for him. I started for the kingdom since my life he controlled since I gave my heart to Jesus the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows. Every need he is supplying plenteous grace he bestows. Every day my way it's brighter the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve Him, the longer I serve Him. I said, the longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. you followed the Lord any length of time in your life, you know how true that statement is. The longer I serve, the sweeter He grows. Maybe you got a word on your heart before we get into the message today. You just want to brag on Jesus. Anybody got a word? Yes, sir, brother. He did. And not only that, he, you went from a walker to a, to a cane. Amen. Good to have you back with us, brother. Somebody else? You just 
just want to brag on Jesus. Yes, ma'am. your heart. Amen. 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 Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 Yes, ma'am. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 Somebody else? Somebody else? You just want to brag on Jesus. Bless your heart. Help yourself.
Amen. 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 Somebody else? Somebody else? And turn with me in your Bibles, if you will, to Matthew chapter number 16. Very, very familiar passage of Scripture. As we now move, last week we introduced our new series on the church, Striving Together, God's Glorious Church, and today we're actually going to be getting into the heart of the meat of the messages now as we get into this series. And uh, I know some people, they had said that they were a little bit confused by the title when you start out with church with a question mark. Uh, I guarantee you, though, uh, By the time we're over, it's going to be an exclamation point, all right? Matthew chapter number 16, begin reading in verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail prevail against it. Father, I ask now that you would just hide me behind Calvary. Use me to share what you've burdened my heart with. May it help us, encourage us, inform us, Father of what a blessing we have when we talk about being a part of the church or a church or most importantly, His church. We give you the praise now for all that you're going to do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, like I said, last week we introduced the series and what we basically got down to in that message was this. To have a high view of Christ means that you will have a high view of the church. And to have a high view of the church means also that you will have a high view of Christ. We see that even laid out for us in the passage that we've read here this morning. And that's the case because, as we'll see later on as we get into uh, different aspects of this series, that the Christ and the church are described as the head and body. And we're linked together as a whole. And because of that, that you can't have a high view of one and a low view of of the other. So a high view uh, leads to a high, a high view of the church, leads to a high view of Christ, and a high view of Christ leads to a high view of the church. Now in the message today, we're going to actually delve a little bit deeper into the theology of the church. Now I promise you I'm not going to get, uh, I'm going to keep it simple, but we have to understand some things about church, and that's why we started it out with a question mark. Uh, We have to understand some things about church for us to understand why God is supposed to be getting glory from the church. Now, the first thing we have to understand is that the word that's translated church in our New Testament is the word ekklesia. And you've probably heard that term defined as, uh, as called out once. And the reason for that is because the, uh, the part of the word ek means out, and klesia or kleos means uh, out of, uh, 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 of a group or out of a, uh, uh, called out of a, or to be called out, okay? And the first thing that we, as we get into this is that we have to see is that the New Testament used this term, in a, or, or the New Testament age used this ter- term a little bit differently than sometimes what we tend to think about because we call it the called out ones or the called out assembly. But when you really study it, what you find out is is that not only does it refer to being called out, it also refers to being called together. And we see those two ideas in, uh, throughout the Word of God. We see the idea of being called out in Acts 15 and verse 14. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. But then you go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9 and you see both the idea of being called out and called together. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness. But here it is, 
into his marvelous light. So it's not just being called out, it's also being called together. Now, when you study the word itself in the New Testament, it's in, it's in the Bible in the New Testament 114 times. And out of that, 96 of them referred to what I'm going to call the localized church. And then the other 13 or so talk about the church as a bigger entity than just a local church. Okay, It talks about it as, you know, you've heard me refer to it as the church as a whole. And because of that, sometimes you'll hear people call the, the church as a whole the invisible church and then the local church is the visible church. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as the universal church when it's talking about the church as a whole versus a local church. And to be honest with you, as I've studied Scripture and dug into it and really spent time in it, I prefer the term universal church for the larger church as a whole. Uh, and really, even though local church is accurate, I really kind of like the idea of localized church better. And I'll talk to you about, we'll get into that as we go through this here in just a few moments. Now, the best way to define the universal church is this. The universal church is the whole company of the redeemed of all generations between Pentecost and the rapture. The universal church is the redeemed of all generations between Pentecost and the rapture. So it's made up of every believer from the time of Pentecost, back in Acts chapter number 2, it's still going on today, and it will continue to go on with every believer until Christ comes to take the church home. Now, that's the reason that I don't like the term invisible church, because I hope you guys can see me. Not because I'm anything to look at, but I'm seeing a whole bunch of you, and if you're supposed to be invisible, you guys got problems. So... The invisible church really doesn't fit the description. The universal church, however, does. Because we've got that great cloud of witnesses that's already preceded us. And they have, there have been believers since the, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter number 2. And if I die tomorrow, the universal church is going to continue on. Even though I'm not here, thank God you may not be able to see me, but I'm still going to be there because I'm part of the universal church. And the term localized, the reason I like the term localized better is because we're a local church. But we talk about the term the church in Kingsport, right? So we're talking about every local church that's in the area, that's preaching the truth of the Word of God, right? So localized is better because it can be a single church, it can be a group of churches, that are all preaching the same thing in the same city or area. And we see it used that way in Scripture. Uh, Paul talks about the whole church. And what he's talking about there is all of the different localized, or the local churches that are all together in a particular city. He talks about churches when he's talking about churches in different regions or different areas or different cities. So localized actually fits the term just a little bit better. So we've got to understand, if we're going to understand how God gets glory from the church. We've got to understand this idea of the church and a church, and then later on, as we'll see, his church. So let's start with this concept, this idea of the church. And when I'm talking about the church, I'm talking about the universal church, all right? The church as a whole from Pentecost till the rapture. Now, since it's all believers, we have to understand that the church, is made up of uh, all believers across denominational lines. You know, you've heard the jokes. I know you've heard the jokes that people are going to get to heaven and there's going to be all these different walls and there's going to be this one group that's going to be in behind all the walls and somebody's going to say, well, who's that group over there? He's going to be quiet. They're the Baptists. They're the only ones that think they're here. And, and so, you know, <laughs> but that, <laughs> the church is made up across all denominations of all of those who know Christ as Savior. It crosses denominational lines. It crosses the idea of race, even though race isn't really a biblical term. We've talked about that in other, in other things here at the church. But it crosses denominations. It crosses races. It crosses geographical boundaries. Some of the greatest worship services I've ever been a part of have been in the Philippines and in India. 
and because it doesn't matter what the geography is here, what matters is the geography that we're all citizens together in heaven, right? Now, Galatians chapter number 3, starting in verse 26, says this, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And Ephesians chapter number 1, verses 22 and 23 says, And hath put all things, talking about Christ, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Then one thing to note, and, and this is the thing we this is if there is a major distinction between the universal church and a localized church, whether it's a, in the, in the, let's just talk about Holy Mountain, all right? The wonderful thing about the church is that everybody, everybody that is a part of the church is saved. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So if you are part of the church, it doesn't matter whether you're a Baptist, whether you're a Methodist, uh, or whether you're in India, whether you're here in the States, it doesn't matter. If you know Christ as your Savior, you are a part of the church. All right? But then we have a church. A church is a localized gathering of people who are coming together basically for the purposes of worship, fellowship, and ministry. How do I know that? Go with me to Acts, well, you don't have to turn over there, but Acts chapter number 2, starting in verse 42, says this, And they continue, talking about the early church, this early church in Jerusalem, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all they believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, so they had a single place that they met, and breaking bread from house to house. So they had other places that they were coming together. Again, the idea of localized, not just local. All right, And breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily as such, such as should be saved. Ultimately, a localized church is a tangible expression of the church. Like I said, there have been believers for the last 2,000 years. We don't see them anymore. What the world sees today of the church is a church. They see the body coming together. Each local contribution or each local congregation contributes to the church while it's, foc- while it's actually functioning in its own time and place. Localized churches are responsible for nurturing believers and equipping them for service and evangelizing. And, and all, of those things, all of those things benefit that local assembly, but it also is a part of expanding the church as a whole. Now, the one thing we have to understand, and this is the heartbreaking part, everybody in the church is saved. Unfortunately, in a church, most likely not everybody is. Christ spoke to that in Matthew chapter number 7 and verses 22 and 23. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils? and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. All who are a part of the church know Christ as Savior, but not everybody in a particular church does. And that's one reason it's so important. And, and, and you know, you say, well, you know, and, and I, you know, I, I, you read a lot of stuff, I do, I read a lot of stuff, and, you know, they say, Church isn't necessarily the place, you know, the church is supposed to go out into the world and evangelize. The church, when they come together, it's supposed to be for the edification of the church. Can I tell you something? 
If I know or if I have a suspicion that there's one person in this congregation today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Savior, I want you to know what the gospel is. Because I'm not going to take for granted that just because you're here, just because you've been here for 30 years, just because I have been in churches where a man who was a deacon in a church, after being in that church for 30 years, one day realized that he had never asked Christ to be his Savior. I am not going to take, it, uh, take for granted that everybody, simply because they happen to come to the church that I'm at every Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night, they may even be here for all of those services, but I cannot, I will not take for granted that everybody knows Christ as Savior. So if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, you've never accepted Him as Savior, can I tell you something? You need to get saved today. It, uh, because once that happens, you're here as part of a church. But when you get saved, thank God you become a part of the church. All right? And that brings us to His church. In the passage we started out here, Matthew chapter number 16, verse 18, Christ says, my church. I like that. My church. And while there's a tremendous amount to unpack in that statement, and we're going to come back to this passage and really dive into it in another message in this series, there's one thing today that we need to see both the church through the ages and a church serving in a particular place and time both are part of his church all right and this church is referred to as his body because again paul says in ephesians uh, as we talked about in ephesians but also in first corinthians 12 27 now ye are the body of christ and members in particular all right that's why when Christ confronted Saul, who would later be known as Paul on the road to Damascus, Christ said this, And he fell to the earth, being Saul, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou, not my church, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks aren't you glad and especially as we're seeing more and more in our country today where the church is mocked and made fun of and sometimes attacked that it's not us that's being attacked we may be the part of the body that's bearing the brunt of it but aren't you glad Jesus says that they're attacking him because we have that union with him now, in Ephesians chapter number 5, verses 22 through 27, the scripture refers to the church as God's glory, to present to himself a glorious church. And as I was praying, God burdened my heart with this thought. What about the existence of the church and the existence of a church brings Christ glory? When it comes to the church, we see Christ glorified in a number of ways. Ephesians chapter number 3, starting in verse number 10, says, To the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purposes which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. You get this. The existence, the perseverance, and the work of the church reveals God's wisdoms in his dealings with mankind not just to Satan and his demons, the principalities and the powers that it talks about here. Have you ever stopped to think that as the church, we are a witness to the devil of just how wise God is? But it's not just to the devil, because the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter number 1, verses 10 through 12, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand, the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them which have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. And I love this phrase, which things the angels desire to look into. We are a witness not only to the devil and the fallen angels of the wisdom of God, but we are a testimony to God's wisdom and His grace to even the angels that still serve Him. That's one way we bring glory as the church to God. 
as the church, we're to live in the world in a way that God gets the praise for what He's doing in us and through us, according to 1 Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of them, of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Then, as a local church, we, we too bring glory to God. Christ said in Matthew chapter number 5, verses 14 through 16, Ye are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all they that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, let me tell you, give you a practical example of that right here, right here because it happens here at this church. This parking lot's got somebody in it all the time. I'm here, all, you know, I'm here Monday through Friday. And we'll have multiple cars out here sometimes. And I wanted to say this this morning, and it actually slipped my mind. I want to thank Brother Larry and Brother Tanner. They have been out here all week with a high-pressure uh, water, pressure washer. Word just left me. They pressure washed the entire fellowship hall. They pressure washed back here. I, and, and I know before that he was out here pressure washing the front of the church. Can I tell you something? People drive by and see that and they go, man, them people care about that church. They see your works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Not only that, you come by here and there's a whole parking lot full of cars here and there's a bus sitting out here, just like there was the other day. And people say, man, that church really must love people because they're letting a homeschool group use their facility as the home court for a volleyball team and a basketball practice and all of that kind of stuff. They must love people and they must love the Lord. They see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven because we are a local church, a localized church, a church where people see the difference even in the everyday things. We go to a funeral and like you said, the church showed, uh, part of this church showed up. And people look at that and go, man, they must love the people in their church. And God gets the glory because people see us living in a way that brings Him that glory. Why is that important? Because Philippians chapter number 4, verses 11 through 13 tells us, Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of light. When people see that, they begin to wonder, I wonder what's different about them. I wonder why they do the things they do. And that gives us a chance to show them the word of light. Then in Acts chapter number 2, again, verses 42 through 47 that we read a minute ago, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers and all of that. And then you get to verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. That again is bringing glory to God. The universal and the local church as the visible body of Christ exist to bring God, glory to God by faithfully living out the gospel in the world. It's not just sharing it. It is living it in such a way that people see the difference that Jesus makes. The universal church from Pentecost to today, composed of all true believers, reveals God's manifold wit, uh, wisdom and eternal purpose, not only to the world, but to the angelic beings, both holy and fallen, demonstrating that God has got the victory over Satan. As the local church, we uphold and proclaim the truth, shining as a light in a dark world and displaying the difference Christ makes to those who are lost. Through worship, unity, obedience, and evangelism, a local church glorifies God by revealing the magnitude of His grace. And that brings Him the glory alone deserves. Now, like I said, in order to be a part of the church, you have to have been born again. So the question as we get ready to move into the invitation is this. Do you know 
beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are saved. Because if you don't, you need to come this morning. Maybe you're here today and you know you're saved and you know you're a part of the church but you know it's time and you want to be a part of this church and become a member here. We want to open the doors of the church and if you want to come and be a part of this church, a part of a church, this church, then you come. As we stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed as Brenda comes to place off. thank you for the privilege that you've given me to share what you've burdened my heart with today. Father, how I thank you for the glory of the church. How I thank you for the witness of this church. Father, how I thank you most of all that I'm a part of his church. Father, I pray that you would help us to be that witness as a localized church that people would see the difference in us that Christ makes and they would become a part of this church, and they would become, most importantly, they would come to Christ and become part of the church. Have your way in our time of invitation today. We give you the praise for all that you do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Sabrina, play softly. How about you this morning? Do you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you are born again? If you don't, The fact that you're sitting here in a church doesn't save you. What saves you is acknowledging you're a sinner. Believing that what Christ did on Calvary when He died for our sins was enough to pay the penalty that you owe. And then believing that what He did was enough and confessing Him as Lord. If you've not done that, won't you come? I'd love to introduce you to Jesus. Do you need to come? Maybe you're here and you've been attending this church. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are saved. There's not a doubt you know Christ is saved. But it's time. And you know you need to join up with this church and be a part of a church. Do you need to come? Some are coming. How about you? Some are coming. How about you? You want to become a part of this church today? Do you need to come? My Heavenly Father, how I thank you for the truth of your word, for the blessing that it is to be a part of the church, this church, and His church. Father, help us to always do everything that we do as part of a localized church to bring glory to you as part of the church. And we'll give you the praise for it all. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. I have up here with me, for those of you that can't see in the back, I have up here with me Miss Sally. Now, if you'll remember just a few weeks ago, uh, we baptized this young lady at uh, Laurel Run Park. And she asked Wednesday night, we were talking, and she said, you know, I can't remember for sure whether I've really joined the church or not, this church. And so we went back and we looked at the records, and we could not find uh, where we had, at least, she's been here now for quite some time, and we praise the Lord for it. She's a blessing. But it's never been made official. So this morning, Miss Sally is coming to join with us as part of this church. What a blessing. So you all know how you know how we do this. She comes forward today. Of course, we have the vote on Wednesday night. But in the meantime, you come up, because I, I don't think it's going to be even a hesitation on anybody's part. But you come up, you let this young lady know just how much you're glad to have her as part of our church. All right. God bless you. You can sit down. Go back. God bless you. You got anything you want to say?
Yes, sir, Bob. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. Don't forget tonight. Let me. All hearts and minds clear. Maybe you got something you want to say. Yes, ma'am. Somebody else? Somebody else? Just want to brag on Jesus. Yes, sir, brother. Amen. Amen. Somebody else? Somebody else. I'm going to bring on Jesus. For each and every one that's visited with us today, it has been a pleasure to have you in our services. I hope the service has been a blessing to you. Uh, tonight, we will be uh, in our series on still waters. We just began it last week as well. Still waters, looking at psalms, uh, select psalms throughout the 150 that are there that are encouraging and bless people's hearts and and give them comfort and confidence in the hard times tonight. Last week was Psalm 1 since we started the series. Tonight we're doing Psalm 2. The theme of the message is he's still on the throne. And we'll see that tonight so you come be with us. Wednesday night we will be continuing our series on our study of spiritual gifts. Beginning to look at the gifts of, of, of the different uh, service gifts, or the ministry gifts that are there. We'll be doing that starting this Sunday or getting into that this coming Sunday night. So you come be with us, all right? Thank you for those that are watching via live stream or watching later on YouTube. Pray the service has been a blessing to you. All hearts and minds clear. All hearts and minds clear. Brother Jerry, if you would, you dismiss us in a word of prayer, brother.